Good morning, I'm Adam Sexton. Earlier this month, the Executive Council decided to hold off on authorizing almost a billion dollars to fund state government next month. It's a protest of what three Democratic councillors believe is an inadequate amount of information provided by Governor Chris Sununu about his spending decisions amid the coronavirus pandemic. One of those councillors seeking more information is District 5 Councillor Deborah Pignatelli, who is our guest this morning. Thanks for joining us, Councillor. You're welcome. So what's going to happen on Wednesday? Is it possible that the state's warrant article to basically allow the Treasury to release the money necessary for state spending could be voted down or tabled again, effectively closing state government? Uh, anything is possible, but I am hoping that the governor and his staff will provide us with the information we need to do our due diligence as executive counselors and get us the information we need about where the money is going, who the contracts are awarded to, uh, and other information that we need to make a informed decision. And the governor's argued that uh, this is the most detailed warrant article that's ever been put out there. Explain why you think that's inadequate and what is the information you do want to see specifically? So usually the warrant articles are just a, um, a number that the government needs to fund services for the next, uh, the next month. And usually it goes through and it's fine. It passes unanimously almost all the time with maybe a question here or there. This time, in addition to the money that we need to spend in June to keep uh, government open, there are a number of uh, uh, fund funds that are going to places uh, that we do not know actually where the money is going. It's going, it's listed. I'll, li I'll read you a couple of them. So uh, $42 million is going to the Department of Education. No discussion about where that money is going, could be going anywhere, no oversight. Um, uh, municipal and county COVID cost reimbursement program. Now, I, I suppose this is money that goes to cities and towns to help them out because of COVID, and that's fine, but I would like to know who's getting the money, how they apply, who's applied and hasn't gotten it, who's applied and has gotten it, and how much. Um, and then there is a, a section of $176 million plus dollars that is listed as contingency funds for additional emergency expenditures. No idea where this money is going to, what contracts are going um, with it, how the money is going to be spent, and no oversight. So my job as a counselor, it's written in the Constitution, is to okay any spending of money over $10,000. I and my fellow counselors are more than willing to do this. We're more than willing to meet. Uh, any time, you know, we meet two, every two weeks now, but we're more than willing to meet any time the governor thinks he has some idea of how to spend this money. But according to Article 56 of our, of our state constitution, no money shall be issued out of the treasury of this state, but by warrant under the hand of the governor, with the advice and consent of the council. So I'm looking to advise and consent. None of us want to hold up the money to get to, so that it gets to where it really needs to go. None of us want to do that. But we, as counselors, are elected people, and we are responsible for determining where that money is going, whether it's being well spent. And we need to ask the questions, and we need the information in order to ask intelligent questions. And you mentioned I'm that. certainly hoping that this pandemic, pandemic is not a reason for the governor to make decisions behind closed doors without informing the fiscal committee and the executive council. Both of us are meeting virtually now, and we are more than willing to meet and do our constitutional duty. You mentioned the $42 million within the Department of Education that's going out. Do you have concerns that that might be used for outside the scope of public schools, that some of that might go to private schools? Well, that's the problem. We don't know where that money is going. It could be going to legitimate concerns, or it could be going to charter schools or private schools. We don't know. And I, as a counselor, need to know that. I'm hoping that the governor got our, um, our concern after the vote at the last council meeting and is willing to provide us with the information. I just want a list of where the money is going to, who's getting the contracts, who applied to get a contract and didn't get one, 
and where all this money is going. And there's a push also to allow the council to view the health care concerns that have been accessing this new state uh, sort of uh, loan fund that helps them keep their doors open. Why is it important for the council to see that? The governor has argued that it, the company should be protected in some way. So why is it important for the council to see that? And then what would you do with that information? Are you talking about testing contracts? No, this would be, I think, MD? and Councilor Volinsky has mentioned some of this too. This is, there, there's a $50 million fund the state has set up uh, to help hospitals keep their doors open. And uh, so far, I, unless this has been provided yet, uh, there was some discussion at the last meeting that the councillors weren't getting enough information about who is accessing that fund. Well, I know that some of the smaller hospitals in the North Country, the Andrus, Goggin Valley, Lakes Region, Exeter Cottage, Upper Connecticut Valley, and the Weeks Hospital um, are getting some of that money. And I know how much money they're getting. And that is good information to know. I also know EMC and uh, St. Joe's and the Elliott Hospital are in dire straits and are needing financial help as well. And I'd like to know what money is planned to go to them. You said something at this last meeting also that sort of uh, is a bigger picture concern and plays into what you're talking about here that, quote, this is too much power for one person to have. Explain what you mean there. In the past, the Executive Council has given their approval to any contract over $10,000 going out. And that's, that's our job. That's what we are, are supposed to be doing. So now we, we come to find out that we are not getting the information we need. We can't follow the money because we don't know where it's going. We are responsible to the taxpayers to make sure this money is being spent in an appropriate way to protect our taxpayers. We're elected. So the governor has appointed some other committees to advise him, and that's fine. But we as counselors need to have some say, and we need to advise and consent to this money that's being spent. So even if the courts, and there's a, currently a lawsuit from the legislative side, uh, essentially challenging the governor's handling uh, of the emergency powers, even if the court continues to back up the governor that he's acting within the intent uh, and letter of the law, do you think that the drafters of the law, when they changed it after 9-11 to allow these emergency powers for the governor, do you think they envisioned an emergency situation that would last this long, potentially a year to 18 months? Uh, you know, I don't know what they envisioned. I was in the legislature back then, and I don't remember this bill. It was quite some time ago, but it was right after 9-11. And we thought emergency powers were needed by one person. But, you know, in the 2008 financial crisis, uh, where, our, where our entire economy was at stake, and the stimulus money came into the state, every penny of that money went through the governor and council before it was approved. And I see this as the same thing. And I'm not asking for highly detailed information and information that might be confidential. I'm asking where this money is going, who it's going to, who applied for it and didn't get it. I want to follow the money. I want to know where the money is going. I want to know whether there are any conflict of interest that I can see. I view this as my job. And the governor has argued that the, the transparency is sufficient. He says all of this will be published uh, publicly on the Gopher website, the governor's office for economic relief and recovery. Why do you believe that's insufficient? Well, I believe we have a responsibility to approve the spending of this money. And you know, you can say transparency, but that doesn't make it transparent. Transparency to me means uh, the information is brought to a public group that has been elected by the people. We get to ask questions, uh, we get to comment, uh, and, and that is true transparency. Uh, I don't want to read it on the governor's hand-picked group of people's website. Now, I understand that um, uh, he, the governor has already spent a good amount of money without getting uh, uh, information from the legislative committee. And this was a surprise to them that they read that the governor had already spent this money without getting advice from this legislative group that he has appointed outside of the fiscal committee and outside of the executive council. 
Now, if the governor continues to provide what you believe is insufficient information uh, and uh, uh, allegedly is bypassing the council, do you believe that going to court would be an option at some point? Well, I think the executive council has a good case if we brought it to court. But, you know, I, I have always been someone who has tried to seek consensus and tried to work things out. And I believe... A lot of this could have been worked out beforehand if the governor had bothered to talk to us councillors and to talk to the fiscal committee and to give us the information that we require. It's not difficult to get. Someone knows this information. I don't know why we cannot see it and put on, except that it has his power and is cutting out executive council and the fiscal committee. Councillor, your home base is in Nashua. What are you hearing from constituents and businesses uh, and people in your district about how this pandemic is being handled? I'm hearing from small businesses who are very concerned about whether they'll be able to open up again. Uh, I'm hearing that people are also very concerned because the wearing of masks has not been mandated. And I pleaded with Werner at our last council meeting right before the close of the Please require people to wear masks, and if not for the whole state, at least for Hillsborough County and Rockingham County, where the number of cases is still rising, and we're on the border with Massachusetts, which has a very high number of COVID-19 cases. Um, he did not seem to want to do that, but I am very concerned. Here's something that I learned. If two people are together and neither one is wearing a mask, the trans and one of them has COVID-19, the transmission rate is 70%. If both of them are wearing masks and one of them is infected, the transmission rate is 1.5%. So I'm just taking up from my constituents and the people in Southern New Hampshire by requesting that masks be worn uh, whenever people are going out and around other people. In restaurants, until you're seated, um, whenever you're out with a group of people or run into a group of people. It just makes good scientific sense to me. So I'm hoping the governor will change his mind on that. He certainly changed his mind when I asked for a shelter in place or stay at home order, and he didn't think it was necessary then, but the next day he thought it was a good idea. So I'm hoping he hears this and is willing to mandate that masks be worn in Hillsborough and Rockingham County, if not in the other counties. Okay, Councillor De uh, Deborah Pignatelli, we appreciate your time uh, here on Close Up. Thank you so much and be well. You're welcome and you as well.